Maybe I'll say that. I'm wasting all the good lines here. <laughs> On this episode of the Kate Town Connects podcast, we are going to be remembering Kenosha with singer, entertainer, musician, master of ceremonies, and a true legend of AM radio. From AM 1050 WLIP, we connect and get to know the one and only Lou Ragani. Welcome to an all-new episode of the K-Town Connects podcast. I am one of your hosts. My name is Jason. With me is... Hey, it's Donnie Stancato. Hey, Donnie Stancato. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm just talking in this bad Italian accent. Oh, you're totally canceled for this. Uh, well, we are at the... Recording at Luigi's <laughs> Pizza Kitchen, located at 7531 39th Avenue. They're open Tuesday through Sunday. Call 262-694-6565. You can find their full menu available at luigispizzakenosha.com. Yeah, order those pizza pies. For sure. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit it! <laughs> Drop us a review and tell your friends about the hottest podcast in town. And don't forget to check out ktownconnects.com. Didn't I say that? Oh, it's not in the script. You're going off script. Whoa, what are you doing? Well, I just figure we need those hits to the website. Oh, people I do, yeah. also want to thank Dropping Daisies for there that rocking theme song. Great theme song. Yeah, thank you, Dropping Daisies. We just heard uh, half of their two-fifths of the band last week. Yes. We had uh, Amy Cruschnelli and Danny Cruschnelli yep. on the show. It was a Fusion. great was a, guest. Yes, they are. And our Patreon supporters get to hear this episode early and ad-free. You can join the Patreon party by searching for K-Town Connects at patreon.com. Those subscriptions start at just $2 a month, and you can get ad-free episodes, all the cutting room floor stuff that Jason has to edit out, and for more great exclusive content like our It Is What It Is series, we have some fun on there. And guess what? We got what? some other fun stuff lined up coming up real soon. Do we? Our Patreon subscribers. Okay. Yeah, we do. I can't do. wait. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. We got to talk about that, I guess. Yeah, huh? I wonder uh, I wonder who's grinding my gears today. Oh, boy. And are you in need of some new clothes? You want to be the coolest cat in the room next time you're out in the town? Well, you need some K-Town Connects merchandise, and we have a merch store courtesy of The Lettering Machine. For all your exclusive K-Town Connects t-shirts, beanies, hoodies, face masks, and more... Visit our website and click on that merch banner for a quick link right over to our store. And for all your garment, print, and embroidery needs, contact the Lettering Machine. They are located at 720 50th Street. And visit their website at thelettermachine.com for more. And we need to take a moment to thank our other sponsors, including... Kaiser's Pizza and Pub, located at 510 57th Street. We gotta say that Kaiser's brought us in a pizza today. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Amazing. Thank you, Dan it's and It's a... Double decker with garlic, mushroom, and spinach. Yeah, it was fantastic. Lou, what'd you think of that pizza? You had two Fabulous. slices of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean Kaiser's does it right. A nice deep dish. You're great. I mean, look at that pizza. It looks oh, wonderful. Yeah, it was so good. So we have to thank them, give an extra special thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, Dan and Terry. That at Kaiser's Pizza and Pub. We also like to thank Captain Mike's, fifty one eighteen Sixth Avenue. We're welcome to bring in some burgers, yeah. veggie burgers. You know, hey, sounds good. Union Park Tavern, forty five twenty Eighth Avenue. Hell yeah, uh, Pine Blossom, fifty nine twenty five Sixth Avenue A. Mm. That's Avenue A, oh. as Donnie would say, mm -hmm. A. And we don't want to forget about our good friends Sarah and AJ from Lucci's Grandview. Go have a beer at 6929 39th Avenue. If you're a listener of AM 1050 WLIP, then you are no stranger to Lou's work. He is featured uh, almost every day on the show. Uh, weekdays, Monday through Friday on Remembering Kenosha from 3 to 5. And uh, Saturdays on a music with the stars the music of the stars mm -hmm. music of the stars which is 7 a.m to 11 a.m i believe yeah. 
Right. So, Lou, you are a lifelong Kenoshan, born yeah. and raised. Ooh. And we're going to get, you, I mean, you always talk about Kenosha on your show. You always talk about this person and that person and this person and that place. Well, well remembering Toledo didn't fly when we tried that. <laughs> Just the uh, people, no. Well, we're going to talk, we're not talking about that. We're going to talk about you, Lou. Yeah, we're we're find sh- out find out what's what's goes on with you. What makes you tick? Yeah, we're gonna shine the spotlight on you, Lou. The pacemaker makes me tick. <laughs> from here, from here. Wait, I'll hold it down. Wait. <laughs> no, no, I don't need that stuff. So. so you were uh, born and raised in Kenosha. What neighborhood did you grow up in? Still there on the northwest side. Uh, people go by churches. Mm-hmm. I grew up by St. George saying, I'm at Holy Rosary. Okay. Okay. And then Holy Rosary built a school, but I was already at St. Casmer. Mm-hmm. So I'm the only Goomba at St. Casimir Polish School. <laughs> so then growing up um, in Kenosha, what were your parents like? My dad worked for Simmons. He'd oh. been there 37 years. Came from Italy at 17 with his brother. Brother settled in Chicago, mm-hmm. Angelo. And uh, he went to Upper Michigan right from off the boat in New York. Oh. Some rusty old tub called the Haver, mm-hmm. H-A-V-R-E, French boat. What made so him decide to come to Kenosha? I know. He wanted to do um, work. I, the, the rest of the Rugani stayed there. He's from northern Italy. Luca. It's a town of about as big as Milwaukee, kind of upscale. So he comes to uh, right away to Upper Michigan. He gets a job in a copper mine, which Ooh. is uh, uh, he didn't have to serve in the Army because it was an essential business. Mm. So then met my mother there. Father and mother had a store and uh, in South Range, which is a small village like about like Union Grove. Okay. And then um, after about seven years of that, they, the whole family moved to this area. Her family and my dad, and they got married at the old Mount Carmel Church, torn down now. Okay. 55th Street, 22nd Avenue. It was Holy Rosary then. All right. There's a story. And then um, 18 years later, 18 years later, I'm born. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you the only child? or? Yeah. Hmm. So it's like my dad must have come home and, oh, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there there goes fun time. You know, right. now we got to, that kid's going to cost me $300,000. <laughs> they were they were popular in town. They were entertainers. My dad worked uh, at Simmons during the day mm-hmm. and then at night making the vaudeville circuit oh. with my mom. Oh, wow. What'd they do in the vaudeville? Well, they were in trios and then they played at the uh, different theaters in town. Okay. Like, they play music or just Yeah, and they were part of the little song theater. Song kind of? Okay. It was it was great. All right, like an improv kind of thing almost. No, no, it was it all scripted? Okay, all, all scripted. Right. It was very good. Oh wow, cool. Vaudeville cool. was big. Cool. My dad started at Simmons. Years later, he did paving on Sheridan Road. He did. Um, he worked for Nash for two weeks, and Nash was in the engine testing department, uh, testing department, where you had like a lot of gas fumes. Okay. And uh, he got sick from the f- breathing the gas. Hmm. No OSHA, you know. Yeah. In fact, there was an explosion in that department back about 55. Okay. I did that story for remembering Kenosha. Okay. Gasoline. Hmm. What was your first job ever growing up? Okay, I was on a job, the one I created, selling fruits and veggies door to door. Oh, yeah? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Where did you get the fruit and veggies from? Mom's every garden? Every summer. And then later on... But where did you get the, the product to sell? Oh, uh, pick them up cheap and sell them at a profit. Okay. Nice. From the market? I mean, you, I'm, I'm picturing you in someone's backyard picking their apples. You know, you, you might be onto something there. I just <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> All right. And then um, I worked for Jim and Yachty Pure Oil Station. And then I was doing that. Where was that? that? I right out of high school. It was gone now, 22nd Avenue, Washington Road. Mm. It's a parking lot. Okay. The drugstore. Okay. Where Coles was? Yeah. And then I worked one day at Cardinale's Bakery. One, I should say, one overnight. Yeah. You got to be there at three Ooh. in the morning. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Three in the bread, morning yeah. when you're in bed, the Cardinale was baking bread. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I worked there one day. It was miserable. <laughs> miserable. I hated it. <laughs> hated it. I got yelled at putting too much jelly in the Bismarck's. Oh, oh no. Can't yeah. have too much jelly. No, no. Are you kidding? Oh. <laughs> so that's it. And, um, Nothing against them, but they had the rules. Right, right. And so I bailed out, and then I took it easy. When I turned 18, I got a job at American Motors. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. This after Hated you, it. After you graduated? Yeah. And where'd you graduate? St. Mary's High School. St. Right Mary. over here. Oh, right. St. Mary's. 39th and 73rd. All right. Nobody knows that was a high school. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Were you, you, were it's you, interesting. You yeah. must be easily bored. I uh, know. Well, all, all my life, I never realized that that was a high school. Years, well, it was in the ago. basement. 
Oh, yeah. I think that's where they have like the kindergarten. There, Centipede though. City. Ah. <laughs> You'd be sitting there and want to pick up your books and walk <laughs> off with them. How large was your graduating class? Oh, let's see, it's pretty small because we split with St. Joseph. Mm-hmm. St. Mm-hmm. Joseph opened with freshman staff, and we continued one more year, junior, senior. Okay. Put together a band over there at a variety show, even with that small class. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and then when we graduated, that was the end of the high school. Okay. When did you get involved in music? Oh, yeah. I, I did piano lessons at St. Casmer. It was like 25 cents a lesson. And I'll tell you guys, it was worth 25 cents a lesson. <laughs> well, was it 25 cents a lot of money that those days? No, I'm joking. Get it? That's kind of less. And I played baritone horn. Okay. There's no future, believe me, for a baritone horn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you said you got into a band when you were in, in high school then. What kind of band was that? It was a polka band. Oh. oh. The Sauerkraut Five. All right. We were pretty good. Sauerkraut Five, I huh? I like that name. We help? played, believe it or not, we played at school dances for the CYO, just to show you how easily amused the kids of that day were. <laughs> yeah, talk about a sock hop. <laughs> so did you play the horn in that, or did you do something yeah, different? Yeah, I played a horn, yeah. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Did you ever See, get involved in any other instruments? I know you're a singer sometimes. started drum and bugle corps at Holy Rosary, two of them. The Queensman, the Queensman Squires. We're pretty good. Mm-hmm. Top 10 in the nation at U.S. Open. Wow. That was over a six-year season. Okay. And then I uh, headed out with some of the people, the pillars of the community over there at the church. I think they were a little jealous. Mm. We were getting the trophies, and those guys, they were talking about sports night, and the two shall never meet, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of student were you when you were in high school? Kind of what? Student. Lousy, daydreamer. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Class clown. What were you daydreaming about back then? Getting out of school, recess, lunch, <laughs> um, going home. Had a, a couple of girlfriends over there. We hung around even after the uh, the school closed. Uh-huh. We had a good time. And then I introduced them to their future husbands. <laughs> Isn't that how it always goes? <laughs> and that took care of that, Pat, Palmas, and yeah. Oh. But it was fun. It was fun. So then you get out of high school and you think you're going to go work for the motors? Is that your kind of plan? I took it easy all that summer. I had a good time. What'd Played you do? with the band and yeah. stuff. And then in November, November the um, 18th. I worked at American Motors, and I stayed there for 10.1 years. Wow. Oh, wow. Hated every second of it. <laughs> Make that every instant. <laughs> <laughs> were you at, which plant were you at? I was here on 30th Avenue. Okay. That's... It was in the connecting rod division, right. and there was always some foreman over there who was glad to be out of production and get a white shirt, and he would say, come on, use both hands, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, that's okay when you're like 18, you know. But after a while, it wears a little thin. Yeah, yeah. So we had a few jokes we pulled on him. I found a whistle, a factory whistle, and I fixed it with a slide. I could play tunes on it. <laughs> and they'd run over, who's playing music over here? <laughs> Mama don't want no music playing around here. <laughs> so, huh. so uh, but I, I bailed out of there at 10 years. Okay. So you're a young man, you're in your early 20s. You know, you got a decent job that's paying the bills, things like that. What are some of your hangouts back then? What would you do for fun? I was with the drum corps. I marched in the Kingsman. We had the Queensman, the Squires. Okay. So there's always something to do. We hung around at Mary's Park View Restaurant. Today, it is Soon's Sushi Cafe. Oh, okay. Columbus Park. And it was called Mary's? It was Mary's. Um, Mary's Park View. And it was kind of a place that's open all night long. And, you know, I went inside the other day, and it's exactly the same. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't changed a bit. Great memories. And then, before that, there was uh, Lamar Pizzeria, which... Is right next door to Kaiser's. Oh, okay. Kaiser's Pizza was the Mize restaurant, and there was two uh, two parts of Mize. The East Wing was the Mize restaurant. It was open till about three in the morning, and the, the West Side was Lamar Pizza. So you did your ten years at AMC, and you're like, you did it like this. it's a sentence. You know what? <laughs> you're spot on. It was. You are out of here. You're done. What were you going to do then? What were you going to do? You know, you're, you're like, I can't do this anymore. What, what? Get out of AMC is number one. Okay. And I, I walked out of there and I went over to 6467th Street at WAXO FM 96.9. 6400. There's a church there, isn't there? No, it's um, Hammett Chiropractic. Oh, okay. A little farther up by where the roller rink is. It used yeah, to be that's up, right. up there. Okay. The roller rink was in there then. Okay. 
And the building. But there is a radio station there at the time? Yeah. And the what, building. It's the same building. What was the station? Hammond Chiropractic was built for WAXO. Okay. Kenosha's first FM. Not by much. All uh-huh. right. By a couple of weeks before LIP got on. Ah. What year is this? That was 62 when they went on the air. Okay. And then you came on there as a as a DJ then? Yeah. Nine till five. AM? Yeah. Oh, nice. You did, you did no, an eight-hour shift on the radio? Yeah, it's crazy. Huh? Oh, wow. Wow. It's crazy. I mean, you're playing music, though, huh? Yeah, that. And we had uh, we had talk shows, too. It was okay. like an AM station. Okay. Did you always want to get in the radio, or you just you just kind of quit your job, and you're like, I'm going to go be on the radio? I kind of thought I could do radio when I was in high school. Okay. Did a few interviews on LIP and stuff like that. Okay. You know, for what? Oh, just talk about school and stuff like that? That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think it's time we take our very first break, and we'll be right back with more with Lou Rigani. Welcome back to the K-Town Connects (laughs) podcast. Hey, yeah, and you've seen our great giveaways all over social media, sponsored by the great local businesses, Frank's Diner, Faded Barbershop for Men, and Lulu Birds. We've been giving away some great stuff lately, and we have a very special giveaway coming up that isn't for those silly people on Facebook this one is just for you, our listener. Yeah, just for and the listener. And time is running out on this yes. raffle. We are doing this next Saturday, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to be doing a live drawing, raffle drawing, at the Downtowner Saloon, located at 707 56th Street on June 19th at 3 p.m. So saddle up and join us at the it's Downtowner Saloon. Next Saturday. So, yeah. But you have to enter this raffle for the chance to win. Yes, and we have so much good stuff in there, Jason. Yeah. It's all stuff we've collected throughout Season 2 and beyond. All kinds of great stuff. In order to enter that, you just need to drop us an email at ktownconnects at yahoo.com. Just send us an email with a subject line raffle, and you will be entered to win. You must submit this by when? June 18th? Yeah, June 18th. Yeah, I think we'll take it up to midnight on June 18th. Yep, and don't worry, all of our great Patreon subscribers, you are already entered. All right. A little shout out to Brett Bjorn for the, being the newest subscriber, so you're entered to win too. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that downtown or lunch. Yeah, that's going to be great. So Diane and I are going to sit back, have a nice lunch there, mm-hmm. talk to Dana maybe a little bit yep. if she's around. And then we'll do the uh, raffle and see who's yeah, the big so, winner yeah, for so season two. Come on down to the Downtowner Saloon on June 19th. Oh, they can come down there? Yeah, let's all hang out. Hmm. Let's get them all down there, right? Wow, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, Lou, you should join us at the Downtowner Saloon on July 19th. Oh, don't say it if you don't mean it. Oh, no, come on down. The more <laughs> the merrier. <laughs> and we are talking to Lou Rigani. You might know him from WLIP. He has those great shows, The Music of the Stars, which airs Sundays from 7 to 11 a.m. And then my favorite show, yes, probably right. my favorite show on WIP, I think, is Lou's show, Remembering Kenosha. Oh, yes. Because I am a Kenosha historian myself, and I appreciate Kenosha history. I, I dig it. So, Lou, when we last left you, you were working at WAXO, located over there on the west side of Kenosha. You uh, walked in and got a job there, just... Yeah, I think it was easy then. Right? You just kind of talked your way on. They put you on the air and... You talked your way into a job. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and they believed me. Hey. So how was radio back then different than it is today? Uh, back then, everybody was trying to be very polite. There was no shock radio stuff. Never. Okay, yeah. The FCC was very down on that. Mm-hmm. You, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't be allowed to get by with it. Yeah. A radio is uh, immediate, so if you got to change your commercial, bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another thing is that uh, radio is your buddy. When you read a paper, it's a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. But when you hear the, the voice come over the speaker, yeah. you identify. And so that's that's a good thing about selling stuff. And uh, if you got a sale, bingo. That yeah. second, it's immediate, like news. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when you had the first commercials you've done? <clears throat> yeah, they were um, they were live. Let's see if I can remember. Let's see. That was um, that's a good question. Car dealerships. Oh, okay. Walter Mack Cadillac, <laughs> the latest car, used car. And you're trying to build up a car that maybe you wouldn't want to drive yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff that, well, that'll buff out. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. How long were you at uh, WAXO then? I was there from... Um, January of, of 69 up until April of 70. Okay. They were sold to um, a new group of owners. And uh, these guys are not the easiest guys to get along with. 
Yeah. So I decided to bail out. I stayed in radio. Yeah. Worked in Rockford at WLUV. Oh, loving good country. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but then how'd you get involved in the TV work then? Oh, that you mean the top? In, the, in wheeling, you said you're... Making TVs. Yeah, how'd you get involved in that? That was. A, I decided to do... Uh, were you doing both? Or I knew something about Munts TV. The guy who owned it, the guy who founded it was Madman Munts. <laughs> and he said, I'm Madman Munts. I want to give these away, but my wife won't let me. She's crazy. <laughs> but the sets were good. They were good sets. Okay. And if you find one someplace, you plug it in, chances are it'll still work. Oh, okay. Okay. So were you still doing radio and doing the TV thing at the yeah, same time? Yeah, I was time? doing both. Kind of but I, I, wanted to, um, I wanted to see if I could do, like, national sales. Okay. I worked there till the day they closed. Nobody's making TVs anymore here. Yeah. Everything is flat screen. Mm-hmm. Nobody makes the old tubes in CRT. Mm-hmm. Everything is, well, like you see in the department stores. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's better. There are better sets now. High def. Right. And cheaper. And cheaper. Yeah, you can, you can and find a 72 inch for like 600 bucks there nowadays. You go. It's crazy. There you go. We sold them for 600 bucks and they were like 25 inch. Oh. And they didn't have any kind of a picture like today. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so, wonderful. So we got to ask at this point in time in your life, was uh, was there ever a, a Mrs. Rugani? Came close three times. Yeah? Oh, yeah. What happened with that? They found out what I was like. (laughs) 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 Uh, Uh, No. And I found out what they were like, too. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any any little Rugani's out there in the world? There might be. There was a woman that walked by with a kid. (laughs) I'd say. So I hid behind the post there at Kmart (laughs) until they passed. That was a close shave there, Jason. Uh. So that's a no. No, the answer is no. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Okay. Yeah, just had to, just wondering, you know, wonder about you. Ask some questions, you know, and get to know you. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so. No secrets. All right. Good pizza. Kaiser's. Mm. So then how long have you been on the air for uh, on WLIP? Well, how did you get into WLIP then? I, that's uh, been 29 years I now. ran for office in Kenosha, just like you did. Oh. I ran for mayor. You ran for alderman. I didn't. I didn't run. I just put my name in the running for the. I would. It wasn't an election. It was just an appointment. Oh, that's right. It was yeah. an appointment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was that's selected right. by the other alder people. So I was. Um, you went for an actual election for mayor. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, here's what happened. We had an incinerator coming into Kenosha. Mm. When American Motors left with their 5,500 some employees, there was a panic that set in. This was 1989. Mm-hmm. Christmas time. Great timing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, Merry Christmas. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened then was um, all the carpetbaggers came into Kenosha. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll, one guy, I'll take over American Motors. I'll make cars. Yeah. Yeah, just give me the plant. Well, how can you pass that deal up? And then there was this incinerator. Kenosha was known as um, a Lulu, locally underutilized land usage. Mm-hmm. That means were suckers for an easy twist. Mm. And they said, we'll hire 10 people. Oh, wow, I got a job coming in. That'll make my political appointment look not so bad. Mm. Once you do something about this unemployment. So they came in, the people in Kenosha down at City Hall over there. Oh, wow, wow, 10 jobs, yeah. I said, this is an incinerator. Yeah. And they're going to burn uh, hospital waste. Well, that's they're burning it now. Yeah, they are. But it's bad policy. And weren't they looking to put it right out by Shopco there in that area? Yeah, right behind there. Okay. It's still there. It's um, Wisconsin Fuel and Heating now. Okay. In fact, hardly a week goes by. Somebody says, you know what this is, don't you? The guy says, yeah, we know. <laughs> they bought it from the estate metagen, which was, you're talking mob. I think there was some kind of connection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they come into Kenosha. We put together. I'm trying to make it short. <laughs> Tried to make it into an um, incinerator town of 70 tons every day. Every day, holidays, wow. Sundays, every day, 70 tons from other cities. And uh, the group, uh, I was just a foot soldier, Kenoshans Against Medical Waste Incinerators. And the idea was we're going to all run for office <laughs> because the aldermen were, we're not going to get rid of that incinerator. Yeah. There's nothing wrong, no evidence that anything, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So we said, well, let's see if we can run for office and bounce you. We got rid of 10 aldermen. Wow. 10. <laughs> wow. 10. <laughs> Out of the 17. So now we have a pro Camwe city council. <laughs> we passed an ordinance. It may not burn plastic or rubber. That broke their back right there. Yeah. 
Because that's what medical waste basically is. Were you the one, one of the ones that won an alderman position? I, I ran for mayor. Okay. John Fox, remember him? Oh, yeah. He ran for alderman. Um, oh, we all ran. Lynn Bello, she won. Hmm. She was an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> and she won. <laughs> um, we could go on and on. But, yeah. um, so because I got that, that election thing under my belt, I got a call from LIP. Would you like to do a Sunday morning show? Oh. oh. Or Sunday afternoon show, too. Okay. Nine till three. Yeah. So I um I, I started over there, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's how it started, huh? The music? 30 years later. Okay. Hmm. Back then, we were a big band sh- uh, station. Westwood won. All music, pretty much? I mean... Well, news, and once in a while, a talk show. Okay. But most mostly music? Well, yeah. Oh, wow. A big band, yeah. Some of that stuff was repetitive. I got tired of hearing uh, that's a Maury every hour. Every hour. <laughs> right, right. I said, you know, but so, so so they call you back. They call you. You get the gig, and then you're responsible for ad sales, and that's how you get. No, not me. Nope. You're, I don't sell. No, you're, you're, you're out of the game on that. But I can make you a deal. Oh, please do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you started out with uh, the music program. You're doing Sundays. Music of the Stars. Sounded yeah. like a big band show. Okay. And then now, what else are you doing with your time? I mean, you can't just, that doesn't pay the bills. What else are you doing there? Uh, I mean, like, you're only working one day a week at WLIP at the time. Then? Yeah. Oh, a landlord. I was a landlord. Okay. Lording it over the land. Ah. <laughs> Dress the roll, too, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a landlord suit like you wouldn't believe. Okay. Big old top hat. Ooh, so they know, yep. here comes Lou. He means business. Edwardian we better rent. <laughs> How'd you get into uh, owning properties? One of my ex-lady uh, friends said, Lou, why don't you buy this house downtown? It was at 61st and uh, 5th. Okay. Why don't I buy the house? I don't know. What do I know about houses? <laughs> Back of the park. Okay. And so I um, I looked at it and I thought, well, okay. I kind of did some numbers and I decided. Then I went to one of those high-pressure real estate seminars. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> They're all gone now. <laughs> you know what happened to them? They all went bankrupt. <laughs> I think they made more money selling books and tapes yeah. than they did. But um, landlording was pretty good, but I dealt with some real some real jerks. Oh, I, I bet. Tell you. I bet. <laughs> yeah. We'll tell you a story sometime. How many I properties? I want to do a landlording show at LIP. Yeah, yeah. you should. And at the peak, how many properties did you own? Uh, you mean units all together? Oh, it must be a 30 maybe. Okay. Well, oh, very nice. That's, that's a lot of people to collect rent from. I tried to be nice to everybody. Sometimes they weren't so nice back. Yeah, true, true. And some of the, oh, there's stories. They're all the same. Did you have some nightmare tenants that you had to? Oh, yeah. No, the right. majority. Yeah, the majority. Yeah. yeah. They say anything, do anything to get in. <laughs> so when did you start doing the weekday show, the Remembering Kanoa show? When did that, how did that come about? 2007, I remember it well, day after Labor Day. Okay. And why, they were looking for some programming then and you came on? What was the? Uh... Yeah, were you the brainchild of coming up with this show? No, I wasn't. Program director. Now he's called content director. WLIP John Perry. Mm-hmm. So we want to do a show from the, uh, the History Center. Oh. Let's go down there and see if they're interested. We took a ride down there. We had an appointment. I walked in. There was nobody in the place except um, uh, a young lady. I can't remember her name. And um, and one of the assistant directors. And um, so we'd like to do a show from the History Center. Oh, we're pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> busy? There's nobody in here. I didn't see that. <laughs> And the director, of the, the director of the History Center wasn't even there. He was a couple of rooms away on the Internet. You know, I, this is important. He give you a chance to get radio, radio yeah. play. Right. And he wasn't interested to sit there. Finally, they said, um, well, what about you guys? Can't you? Well, we're too busy. Well, let's get somebody else. Oh, no, they got to be an employee. Hmm. And then they came up with the idea of Don Jensen. Remember him? Mm-mm. He was a... Historian in Kenosha, very good one. Okay. Very good. He worked for the Kenosha News and volunteered there. And I said, well, Don Jensen. Oh, yeah, that'd be great, except he's not an employee. Well, then I guess we're not going to make a deal and you're not going to be on the radio. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, then thanks for asking. Goodbye. Hey. And John Perry said, let's let's just us do it. Wow. Wow, okay. That's what happened. It was a fluke. Huh. Okay. And then you... Were you always kind of interested in Kenosha history, and that's why you kind yeah. of took it over? Okay. Yeah, I'm driving down. Well, I'm driving. my riding in the back seat, mom and dad, looking out the window. So something looks different here. Oh, yeah, those people changed their front door. Crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Little things like that. Oh, huh. interesting. So you started with Remembering Kenosha in 2007, you said? Yeah, uh, okay. the day after Labor Day. Okay. Was that about the time when WIP was getting to more of a talk radio yeah, throughout right. the whole day kind oh, of thing? Oh, it had gone talk 
in the later uh, later 90s. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, that's not really true. Uh, more of the um, later 2000s. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So do you remember what your first show was about for remembering Kenosha? No, I don't. No? <laughs> that they go in the archives. What? No, I don't remember. I don't. Oh. I can't remember don't. remembering Kenosha? <laughs> <laughs> ah, crazy, eh, Donnie? <laughs> so now when you do your show, you get to fill two hours a day, five days a week. That's 10 hours. You get a lot of call-ins that helps fill the time. But you still need to kind of be prepared for some of this stuff. What kind of resources do you use to help find this Kenosha history and find things to talk about and things like that? Well, see, uh, I kind of think about stuff that I can bring up the next day. So I'll just go in there and drag it up out of the archives and the files. I got a lot of stuff, too much. I got a garage, one okay. of them. Well, what kind of digital access do you have? Do you, is there something, does the History Center hook you up with some kind of access to anything? No. Okay. No, I don't deal with the History Center. Do you have like a newspaper archive or something you yeah, can look at? Yeah, newspaper oh, archive. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. So you subscribe to a service, one of those services sure. that you can... And not just Kenosha, but okay. stuff that's related to. Okay. Sometimes it delves outside Kenosha, but that's all right. If it ties in. Do you have a preferred newspaper subscription archive that you use that you well there's something called newspaperarchive.com okay and i was on that and there's a newspapers.com i'm still there and if you go to the libraries especially the one on 38th and 80th mm -hmm. that was at the southwest library yeah, yeah yeah there's um microfilm oh mm -hmm. and you can put it up on the printer and print anything you want photographs anything mm -hmm. i don't use that but it's available to people if they want to check out but which newspaper database do you prefer? Anything. Okay. They're all the same to you then, pretty yeah, much? Yeah, Kenosha had so many papers at one time. Kenosha had um, had a paper in the 70s called Kenosha Times. And I remember the guy who ran it, Dennis Rooley. Mm -hmm. Frank Carmichael hired him. Mm -hmm. And he merged the Kenosha Times in with Happenings. Okay. In the 80s. Made 80, about 84, maybe. All right. Huh. Nice guy. Good little paper. Another thing that Kenosha had a lot of that you kind of, uh, one of your niches is theaters. Mm. Do you have a favorite former Kenosha theater? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Gateway. I think the Gateway. The Gateway wasn't the biggest. It had a huge screen, not screen, uh, stage. The Gateway was um, made for live presentations, bigger than the Kenosha theater. Kenosha had more seating. Okay. And, and Gateway, which one was, is that the roadie now? Yeah, the roadie now. Okay. And then um, that was built in 27. It was open on uh, December 29, 27. And um, was it just a, was it a theater or was it uh, movies or a stage or both? Both, actually. Okay. Very, very viable with vaudeville. Oh. Roy Rogers was there. He opened up, although he used his real name, Leonard Sly, <laughs> that night of December 29, okay. 1927. He was 16. Hmm. I knew his daughter, I still do, Cheryl. She went to Kemper Hall. Roy was here all the time with Dale visiting her. Oh, really? Wow. So there's a big Kenosha tie. But she was a graduate of, of Kemper Hall. Okay. But there are so many different theaters around. I mean, a lot of them are still standing. They're empty now, of course. But there's so many that you don't even know that used to be theaters. I found some that are interesting, like the... The Cirque on 7th was uh, the Butterfly Theater. Then the Hollywood. Then the Hollywood. And then Rep the Road, where the the factory bar is, that was a theater at one time. Oh. Where, which one? Uh, right in the right up a block south of the Hollywood, where that... Uh, oh, yeah, the Cozy. Okay, yeah, that was called? Okay. Same owner. All right. The Cozy was just like a storefront. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a small place. Yeah, not much bigger than his room. Yeah, yeah. And you had a sheet up on the, well, that wasn't a sheet, but <laughs> on the corner, and then you had somebody grinding the silent projector here. <laughs> and, oh, wow, moving pictures, you know, it was novelty. Yeah. Oh, we had we had 40 theaters in Kenosha. Wow. Over a period of time. Okay, okay. Well, probably, about, probably 15 open at one time, though, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many all there over was, the place. There was a theater next door to the um, the Gateway. The gateway, uh, next door to the gateway, was the Blue Mill, and before that it was the Orpheum, original a Orpheum. different Orpheum, okay. And I did a story on that today, by coincidence, on the air, where the guy ran off with all the money. <laughs> he went and he ripped off the president of John Deere car in Moline. And they pinched him for that, 1500 bucks out of the Blue Mill. <laughs> they tore the Blue Mill down and put up the Union Die, big dry cleaner. Okay. But the gateway, that was built in... Um, so many stars, Bella Lugosi, Lawrence Welk, Glenn Miller, John Philip Souza was here mm -hmm. with his band, and go on and on. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of great stars. And, um, and then it went bankrupt. Uh-huh. In the Depression, everybody went bankrupt. So did the butterfly. Yeah. And they closed it. They reopened as the Hollywood five years later. The Gateway reopened as the Gateway. And then in 76, or actually in um, in 56, they closed. You want to talk theaters, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the Gateway closed because of um, television's impact. Yeah. Most of the theaters that closed back then, the Vogue, the Lincoln, the, the Roosevelt stayed open. The Vogue is still standing. It's over on 52nd and what, about 16th or 17th? 17th. Yeah. And the Lincoln one's still standing. Right? Yeah, the Lincoln. 14. You could walk into the Lincoln and start movies again. It's that, It's all original. Wow, okay. Yeah. They kept it going because it turned into a church, mm-hmm. which is good. Mm-hmm. Now, is it true that the roadies used to have an entrance on 6th Avenue near where the Century Pub is? You're on a mystery there that nobody's been able to figure. Okay. Here's what I think happened. The Sachs brothers want to build this theater. They contract world-famous architects, C.W. and George Rapp, out of Chicago. They built the Oriental, the Chicago, the Uptown, big movie palaces. Mm -hmm. And they also, and that's the only one they built in Kenosha. So they come here to build it. And I'm thinking that the, the original entrance was supposed to be on 6th Avenue, Main Street. Okay. And, um, well, it was just becoming 6th Avenue. They changed that year. Too. And would it be the south side of the Century Pub? Yeah, that's okay. right. You can see the front. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that's what happened. And if you, you go into the, um, the gateway now, and you go down that long lobby, which is not supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. They don't, no need for that long lobby. Yeah. That was very wasteful. But it's okay. Uh, the original entrance was very short to go into... Sixth Avenue, mm. and that was more modest, more in keeping with the, with the theater, which was only what sixteen hundred seats. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's what happened. It's only a guess because there were no records. Wow. That's what I think. So no I one knows for sure. Huh? That's interesting. Yeah, I'm glad you, you you brought that up. There's another theory that the city wouldn't let them pull the marquee there, but they had the Orpheum, they had the, the Majestic, they had the Kenosha. Yeah. The same marquee. So I I don't think that's true. Well, there's still a marquee right on the corner, right near the Apis, right? So that marquee's still there. At least it was last year. Um, oh, the the, uh, the the cameo Burke Chief. Yeah, right up near yeah. the Apis, the new uh, restaurant there. There's a you can still see the marquee sign; still sticks out. Yeah, that was the uh, the cameo. Okay, but yeah, that's a marquee. Or the it. Chief, also known as the the Kenge. Okay. They took the movie theater. That place never made any money. <laughs> like, obviously, it changed the name so often, huh? Yeah. Huh. Uh, at the end, they were running exploitation pictures, mm. uh, girls gone bad, stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Hey. You know, I mean, oh, Donnie, you got it parked up. Oh, yeah, that's still running. Yeah, then I get a video tape. Okay, so then what happened? One more thing. I know you want to, you got, you want to wow. move on. No, we're doing fine. A lot of pizza left over here. <laughs> and actually, Frankly, it's all gone, I think. Okay. You guys ate it all. Another theory, and this is the one I subscribe to, uh-huh. is that they did have a budget cut, they wanted the long lobby. Mm. It was on a weird street. Fifth Avenue was narrow. There was nothing there. They never even finished the tall sign on the other side because nobody went there. Okay. And it's off the beaten track. Why would you want a theater around the corner? Of course, back then, people sought out theaters. Well, the factory was right there, too, right? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. And the street one right up against it. It was only a little two-lane road. Mm. And across the street was, um, there was a pizza plate, Lamar Pizza. Later on, it became Kaiser. They were there. But that's another story. They tore it down for the boulevard. Mm-hmm. So now you can see the Gateway Theater. But back then you could hardly see it unless you're looking for it. I think that when they said, oh, this is pretty expensive. Why don't we just eliminate that second exit that goes on to 6th Avenue? Uh, okay. And if you look, you go into that long lobby and look to your left. It's a blank wall. You can see where the extra lobby was supposed was, to be. Oh, huh. That's what I think happened. Yeah. Nobody can. Nobody knows for sure. Hmm. But I bet you that I bet you I'm spot on. So that's what I think. Yeah. Was that building built at the same time that the uh, on Sixth Avenue there? Yeah. That was punched through and redone. So it was built. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's an old building, but it was punched through. Okay. And, and demolished and then rebuilt with that entrance. Huh. Interesting. And then the um, I saw a picture, 1928, of movie posters uh, on that on that entrance. Mm. So apparently there was there was an effort to open. Oh, it okay. There. Wow. I think it's about time we take our second break, and uh, we'll be right back. 
And we're back with the K-Town Connects podcast. Our guest is Lou Ragani from AM1050 WLIP. He has two shows. One of them airs Sunday, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., The Music of the Stars. And then he also has Remember in Kenosha, Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. What happened to the Fredo Corleone impression? Uh, yeah, he sounds really down right now. He's no, like falling asleep what? over here. No, Are you I'm mad because I made that joke before? Uh, yeah, I think I'm so. I'm furious. I'm furious. <laughs> uh, I, I, can, I can do it again. And it's time for our Quick Connects. Ooh, Quick Connects. And Quick Connects is brought to you by Washed Out Locally own hair products from the suit and tie businessman to the motorhead leather jacket rocker washed out is loved by those seeking the best hair products at an affordable price mm. if you want that great donnie stancato look visit washedouthairus.bigcartel.com for details wow wow i want to read that for like months and you always steal it from i me. know because i just i worked on it for so long <laughs> i wrote it I know, but I, I, you know. Oh, you worked on saying it. Right. The the website's uh, a mouthful. Washedouthairus.bigcartel.com. Yeah, in the beginning, it sounded more difficult. Now we kind of got the hang of it. Hey, all right, Lou, you ready for these quick connects? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Favorite famous Kenoshan? Orson Welles. Favorite movie of all time? Citizen Kane. Mm. (laughs) Got a theme going here. What is your favorite annual Kenosha event? We got a bunch of them, and they're starting to come back this summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do, don't we? We do. Frank Carmichael puts on a lot of good ones. He does. I, I worked at uh, Cheese Palooza one time. Ah. I was the guy that told the people to keep their hand on the car. Oh, oh the car I thing. Remember, I remember that? That, that was re- fun. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. a fun time. Yeah. And I would I would go up to guys and I'd go, "Hey, put her there, pal." <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah, ha, ha, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but no, they um, uh, it was fun. Uh, uh, let's see, favorite event. There's so many good ones. Taste of Wisconsin is good. That's um, That one's going to be missed this year for sure. Um, uh, let's see, then there's um, Twilight Jazz. For sure. Yeah, it's always a good time. That's going on this year. All right, Lou, what's the worst job you ever had? American Motors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, favorite park in Kenosha? Southport, I think, with the oncoming restoration of the beach house. Mm. Mm. A lot of good memories there. Yeah. What is the last great meal you had in Kenosha? Oh, boy. Um, Baker Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I love it. I, I got to tell you, I'm there on Wednesday night, Sunday morning. I thought they pay you to say that. Uh, uh, not, <laughs> they <laughs> had great pizza, though. <laughs> the pizza is wonderful. They award have award best winning. They, award they, they got winning. some of the best pizza. Mm-hmm. 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 This stuff is fabulous from Kaiser. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Man. I'm going to have some right now. Please, right. chomp away. So keep asking. Yeah. Not, you're not going to get any answers. <laughs> but keep asking. That's fine. We'll edit this part up. All right. Well, here's our thinker, though. So you can you can chew while you think. <laughs> Which now-closed Kenosha business do you wish you could bring back? <clears throat> Gateway Theater. Yeah. And uh-huh. it's original, restored. Oh, that'd be nice. Mm-hmm. What a show place for downtown. Yeah. They're building a new performing arts center. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Why? Why? We got the gateway. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of what we have already there. We don't need some new. Yeah. Uh, where in Kenosha would you recommend someone going on a first date? <clears throat> Baker Street? <laughs> first date. Hmm. I would say um, in the summertime, Moonlight Walk in one of these beautiful parks. Ooh. Hmm. How's that? Go for a ride with the top down. Very romantic. Under a night, not today, because it's kind of cloudy, rainy. But like yesterday when it was 95 and then at night, 80. <laughs> what do you want? It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's been beautiful. This last Take a ride on the eye or top down, man. Get that hair blowing. <laughs> In which Kenosha bar do you think you spent the most money at? I've never been to too many bars. Oh. Hobnob, maybe? Oh. Mm. I know you're a uh, vegetarian, so this would be a little different. But this is a big debate in Kenosha, so i got to ask you, big star or the spot? They're both good. I like which one has got the frosted ice, uh, frosted root beer. Oh, the mugs. I think that's. Yeah, they both do, don't they? Oh, the spot I think is more known oh, for okay. their frosty mugs. Yeah, frosty mugs keep, and root beer. Yeah. They keep the empty mug in the freezer. In the freezer, yeah. And then when they put the root beer in there, it freezes to the side. Yep. And you drink it down, and you don't get it all. After about a minute, it begins to melt in there, and then you can chew that ice. You know. Mm. That's we used to do that with the kid. beer mugs that the bar used to work at. They oh, keep those in the cool? freezer. Oh, that's a good idea. Pull yeah. out. I worked at patios years ago, and pulled, everyone loved those frosty mugs. You oh know? yeah, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Well, that was the Quick Connects with Lou Ragani, and that was brought to you that's by it? Washed Out Hair Products. Yeah. Well, we got, we, got more, coming, we got more fun stuff coming up. What time is it, Jason? Trivia segment. Ooh. And trivia is brought to you by Coming Up Roses Cleaning and Organizing. For a professional experience and affordable price, contact Coming Up Roses for your home or office needs. No job is too big or small, so search Coming Up Roses on Facebook or give them a call at 262-748-6978 and see what they can do for you. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Wonderful place, Coming Up Roses. Trivia time! So for trivia, we have five questions for each of you. For Mm -hmm. Lou and for Donnie, we'll test your skills. And this is on Famous Kenoshans. Oh! Are we? And it is going to be multiple choice. So, oh, so I have a chance. You have a chance. <laughs> and it's pretty much going to be, who am I? I'm going to like tell you who I am. Okay. And you're going to tell me who I actually really am. So, Lou, we're going to start with you. You're a guest. Lou, I am an Emmy-winning actor, comedian, and writer who has written on Dennis Miller Live and The Larry Sanders Show. I've also appeared on The Tonight Show. Am I Tom Beards, Donald Clark, or Jeff Cesario? Jeff Cesario. You are correct. C, Jeff Cesario. Brilliant talent. Think I knew simple. that one. I knew that simple. one, too. Screenwriter, too. Donnie. Jason. I am a filmmaker and visual effects artist who is best known for creating sci-fi and horror B-movies from the 50s to the 70s, including King Dinosaur, The Amazing Colossal Man, Earth vs. the Spider, and Empire of the Ants. Hmm. Am I Tony Russell, Bert I. Gordon, or Francesco Bellato. What was the first one? Tony Russell. Tony Russell. That is incorrect. It is Bert Ira Gordon. Ah. Yeah, I met him. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> bet you he was a kook. He's huh? still around. Yeah, he's still alive. I, yeah. yeah. Great guy. What an imagination. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, you grew up in the um, on 58th Street over there by the Ki- Kindred Kitties. That was his store. Oh. His parents had the Gordon Food Shop. Oh, okay. And then he moved to the where the uh, Javelin restaurant was upstairs. Oh. University of Wisconsin Madison. Okay. Got into Hollywood. Hmm. He's like my favorite Kenosha, I think, maybe. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Nice man. Yeah. yeah. He seems like cool, cool. All right, Lou. So you're up one nothing? Second question. I rose up the ranks from Miss Kenosha to Miss Wisconsin all the way up to winning Miss America in two thousand twelve. Am I Laura Kapler, Lily Carnes, or Joya Zamora? The first one. Laura Kepler? Yeah. You are correct. And you're giving them all the easy ones. Am I? Did yeah. you know that one? Yeah. All right. Let's see if you her, know this her one. Her mom was my first grade teacher. <clears throat> oh. Interesting, interesting fact, yeah. huh? Your first crush? No. I imagine your mom must have been a looker, too, if she's the mom of Miss America. She can't. Mm, I wasn't impressed. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, Donnie, number two for you. I started as an actor, but found most success doing voices for cartoons. For decades, I was the voice of Mr. Slate and many other characters on the Flintstones, and I portrayed many supporting characters on Scooby-Doo. Am I John Stevenson, Paul Sorensen, or Edward Klein? Edward Klein. That is incorrect. It is A, John Stevenson. Uh, Did you know that one, Lou? Yeah, he wouldn't give interviews. No? No. Yeah, he he did all kinds of stuff from when I grew up. Oh, yeah. I was looking him up, and... Did a lot of G.I. Joe and Transformers voices. Wow. And yeah. Yep, from Kenosha. Hmm. Lou, you're up to nothing. Wow, Lou, you're wiping the floor with me. Big shocker, huh? That sounds painful. <laughs> Two for 46 <laughs> since we started this. He beat the mayor. I did beat the mayor in MASH trivia. Did you? Yeah. MASH? Yeah. Because the mayor said that was his favorite show, so I did MASH Remember trivia. Remember Joanne Flug? No. The first, that was the film. Oh, okay. Joanne Flug, check her out. <laughs> All right, Lou, question number three for you. Who am I? I am an actor best known for my role as Dr. Stanley Riverside on the CBS series Trapper John, M.D. Am I Charles Siebert, Charlie Talbert, or William Best? Charlie Siebert. Correct. Ooh. Good job. I threw Charlie Talbert in there to kind of throw you off. Uh, Talbert did uh, Angus. Yes, he was Angus, yes. He called me in the air one time. Yeah. He was listening on the internet. Okay. Oh. He lives in New Orleans, I think. Yeah, he's he? a screenwriter now. Okay. All right. 
You know how he got that job, don't you? In a Wendy's yeah. lineup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or in the Oasis, right? On yeah, on the, yeah, the Oasis, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, it, it's, it's, it's like a dream come true. Hey, you, yeah, yeah. you look perfect for this movie role. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, this, this is one I think I could have gave Lou. He might miss it. It might be the only one he might miss, but I'll give it to you, Donnie. Oh, perfect. I'm Donnie, sorry. we were an industrial metal band that started in the 1990s and toured with such acts as Danzig, Guar, Fear Factory, and Typo Negative. Are we the Electric Hellfire Club, Jungle Rot, or Lazarus AD? Jungle Rot. That is incorrect. Was it C? No, it was the Electric Hellfire oh. Club. <laughs> Lou, did you know that one? Nope. Nope. See, I've, <sighs> I should have saved it for Lou, right? Yeah. All right. All right, Lou, let's see if you got this one. Number four. I was an author of over 100 children's books. I was born in Pittsburgh and moved to Kenosha with my husband after World War II, where I also became known for organizing the 4th of July bicycle parade. Am I Margaret Landon, Mary Sauer, or Florence Perry Heidi? Florence Perry, Heidi. You got it. Dang, good Lou, job, Lou, you're good. I shouldn't right. give you multiple choice. This is too easy for you. <laughs> All right, Donnie, here's one you're going to get. All right, let's hope so. Margaret Landon wrote The King and I. Yes. It's, these are all other connotations I threw in here. Yeah. So that's I'm trying to mess with you a little bit. So. Mm-hmm. Not just make up names. Donnie? I'm ready. You're a movie guy. Yeah. I was a major motion picture star for over five decades even winning an Academy Award at the age of 78 for my role in the movie Cocoon. Mm. Am I Alan Amici, Don Amici, Mm. or Jim Amici? Al. No. (laughs) I think Al was a football player. Uh, That sounds like I'm rubbing it in. (laughs) But I actually found out I was sitting on a feather over here. (laughs) (laughs) That was uh, Don Amici. Ah. He was the actor. I know nothing. You know the Don Amici song? No. Does that mean you want to hear it? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be Don Amici in a taxi, honey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Lou, let's see if you get a perfect score here. <clears throat> in 1841, this is going back to before you were born. We're going back a little ways here. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> in 1841, I served as the first mayor of the village of Southport. In 1850, when Kenosha was incorporated as a city, I was elected the first mayor. Am I Michael Holmes, John Bullen, or Michael Frank? John Bullen. That is incorrect. Michael Frank was the first mayor of Kenosha. Yeah, but I don't want to make him look bad. Oh, thanks, Lou. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. And, Donnie, one more here. All right, let's just see if I can add a point. I think you can get this one. All right. If you think clearly, this is, this is more modern. So okay. This is more in your oh, lifetime. Okay. Here. All right. All right. Donnie, after playing football in Michigan State, I was drafted by the Minnesota Vikings in the first round, 11th overall in the 2015 NFL draft. Am I... Melvin Gordon, Gavin Lux, or Trey Waynes? Trey Waynes. You got that right. Yes. Yes. Good job. I threw uh, Melvin Gordon in there to kind of maybe throw you off. Uh, they are both the same year, weren't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And they both came to City of Kenosha to do a fundraising kickball, dodgeball game. Oh, well, they were both from, from Kenosha. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Brad, so, Lou, with an almost perfect score, you have beaten Donnie in our trivia segment, so congratulations. Congratulations, Lou. You have won a bottle of Lou Perini's water. Mm. Feel free to take that home and Thank put you. that on your mantle and mm-hmm. cherish it always and forever. Yep, and you can talk about uh, that Lou Perini's water and how you want it on your great remembrance. Kenosha radio this show. This goes in the corporate yeah. refrigerator yes. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Label facing out. Uh, All right. To hear more great stories about Kenosha, you can tune in to WLIP.com uh, weekdays from 3 to 5 and listen to Remembering Kenosha or find it on the old school radio dial mm-hmm. at AM 1050. Yes. Yeah, set that radio dial. Yeah. Right. But for you, nine ninety five. Oh, perfect. I will <laughs> gladly pay that. And you still get the steak knives. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Oh. Lou, thank you so much for coming on and being on our show. We really appreciate you taking the time to come out thank here. Thank you so well, much, That's Lou. it. I just great. sat down. You're going to uh, wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, we got to kick you out now. Oh, so yeah. sorry. <laughs> thank you so much, gentlemen. Right. Thank you, It's Lou. an honor and a pleasure. Keep, and keep up the great work. I, I love your shows and WLIP. Thank you for saying so. It means a lot to you. Yeah, my favorite show on WLIP. <clears throat> So, Donnie, that does it for another episode of K-Town Connects. Yeah, we really connected. We want to thank everyone for uh, listening. And if you have any hate mail, drop us a line at uh, ktownconnects at yahoo.com. 
And uh, let's thank our sponsors one last time. Oh, here. yeah, we got to do that, too, don't uh, we? We got Kaiser's Pizza and Pub. Uh, Captain, Captain Mike's. Mike's. Lucci's Grandview. Union Park Tavern. The Pine Blossom. The Lettering Machine. Coming Up Roses. Washed Out Hair Product. Frank's Diner. Lulu Birds. Faded Barbershop for Men. And, of course, Lou Prini's Gas and Grocery. All right, there we go. All right, well, thanks, everybody. That was a, that was a fun episode. It was a great episode. Now, yeah. Donnie... I know you want me to ask you this question. You've been bugging me about it all day. So what are we doing here? Uh, we are connecting Kenosha. See you next time. Bye. I'm from Kenosha. I say Kenosha. That great big busy town. Right in the middle of the USA. Between the New York Harbor and the San Francisco Bay. I'm from Kenosha. Maybe I'll say that. I'm wasting all the good lines here.